All right, welcome back to another episode of Phoenix Edge. This is an RPG and gaming news podcast. My name is Hat. And I am Eric. And I am Stan. And today we are going to focus entirely on the PlayStation 5 reveal. So we're going to be going through the general announcements that were revealed about the PlayStation 5 and then also highlighting certain games that we want to talk more about and just in general how we thought the presentation went overall. And then we're also going to be talking afterwards as a separate topic, Project Athea from Square Enix, just because that is the Luminous Productions game. That was what we were talking about last week when we had some speculation. So we've gotten some new details with that. So we would definitely want to cover that in more detail. And that should round us out for a good chunk of time this week. Next week, we're going to hit some of the other announcements, most likely that we couldn't fit into this podcast. And we will hit some Discord questions and do all that good stuff next week. But this week, this is what we're going to talk about. So. Let's jump into it. So the PlayStation 5, we had our final reveal reveal of the PlayStation 5. Very exciting. And there was a lot of games that were revealed here. We got 25-ish games. I keep seeing varying numbers. I've seen 25, 26. I saw IGN say there was 37. I felt like that was a little high. They must have been counting PlayStation 4 announcements or something. But uh, some of the big releases or notable RPGs that were announced was Horizon's sequel, Forbidden West, and Demon's Souls Remake by Blue Point Games, and then Project Athea by uh, Luminous Productions or Square Enix. And we don't have a release date for any of those. Demon's Souls says 2021, but we don't really have anything else specific for that. Uh, there are some other notable games that were announced that are making the buzz, and that's Spider Man Miles Morales which is a standalone styled Spider-Man game DLC 10 to 15 hour. Yeah. Like, like, do you know uncharted lost legacy? That was like a, that's what they're comparing it to right? type deal. Yeah. That's what they're comparing it to. So I believe it can be bought separately though. Like you don't need the base game. Yeah. That one's interesting because we did not get a release date in this presentation for the PlayStation five. And there were a couple of games that, had the holiday 2020 release date and Spider-Man Miles Morales was one of those games that had a 2020 release date. There was actually one, there was a basketball game that got a fall 2020 release date, but people are Mm -hmm. speculating that might come out on the PS4 first, but uh, this game is going to be on the PlayStation five. They literally said it and they said holiday 2020. So I think we can probably expect the console around then. There was also a a reveal of Resident Evil 8 and Mm -hmm. Gran Turismo 7, Ratchet and Clank, Rift Apart, Solar Ash. There's a lot of buzz around that because they're from the creators of Hyper Light Drifter and also the other big games that we talked about for the RPGs just a moment ago. So those were some of the bigger announcements. There's a lot of announcements here. I mean, over 25 games. That's just crazy. They also revealed the console. We're going to talk about some of our thoughts with that but let's just jump into how you guys felt about the presentation overall do you guys feel like it was a good reveal for the playstation 5 uh, eric let's start off with you because i know you were kind of jumping in before the podcast on it so uh yeah i, I would say it's pretty good overall the, there are some games that i kind of just was a kind of like dozing off sleeping to but <laughs> when 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 it hit hard it hit really hard yeah, because we all been wanting a second Horizon game. Uh, we've been looking forward to seeing Resident Evil Eight. I mean, we saw how beautiful the new Demon Souls remake slash remaster mm-hmm. is, and this is from the people who did the Shadows of the Colossus right. remake for PS4, and they did a phenomenal job. Yeah, there's a lot and of big announcements. So there was definitely some good stuff in here. That there was also some. Other stuff, but you know, you kind of have to show the consoles made for everyone, right? And you know, obviously, I'm not everyone, <laughs> so 
you know, you got to show the games uh, for the kids and show the games uh, for people who like like sports titles like NBA 2K21. You, you, you have to show the console does a little bit of everything. And I think they accomplished that with this video. Yeah. I mean, I got to be honest, because of the quarantine, I was not expecting, I didn't know what to expect. Because I was sitting there thinking, okay, if this was a normal year, you know, studios would be pumping out, you know, their games. They'd be pushing hard on people to try to get stuff ready for E3 or the Sony presentation. And because people have been out of work for four months, you know, working remotely, I figured that slowed progress down on a lot of games. It's really hard to do crunch time when <laughs> you're yelling at somebody through a Skype, right? So that, that that just slows things down. So I was impressed with the sure sheer quantity of announcements that were ready to be shown. I, I just didn't expect that given the circumstances. So I thought that was really cool. And I thought that it was just perfect that Sony did not show a price and they didn't show a release date. I know a lot of people complained about that, but I thought this was Sony controlling the discussion and they know that that might be a weakness for them. We will see. But if I want to be a little controversial here, I think they, they're probably still waiting for Microsoft to announce their price point. I agree. And I think that they just went to for the jugular where Xbox struggles and that's on game announcements. And they just came out and announced over 25 games. That's more games than a lot of people have ever played on the PlayStation four. <laughs> right? Like that's a lot of games. And a lot of them are going to come to the PS4 too, but still they, they showed games that were exclusively being made for the PlayStation five. A few of the games, not all of them, but a few of them showed things that uh, the PlayStation four couldn't do. And like this really just puts, I feel Xbox at a weakness right now where they have to come out hard and tell me, why do I want to buy their console? Because Sony just understands that it's games that make people buy the console. And Microsoft is over here trying to say they have the most powerful console in the market. But Sony's like, okay, where's your games? I just showed you 25 to 30 games. I do. I do agree there. But sometimes I feel like Microsoft is trying to sell their console to an audience that doesn't want their box. That owns their, a PC. <laughs> the PC players. Who can already buy their games now on PC. Yeah, and Sony does it a smart way. Sony has their times where they go over the technical stuff, like in a, like in an off thing presentation that was there Awful. before this one. The, yeah. the PowerPoint that put everybody to sleep, yeah, right? The PowerPoint. But <laughs> then all they needed to tell you in this one that everything is better, and that we have a new drive in the PS4 that, according to them runs 100 times faster than the PS4. That's something people understand. They didn't need to go with the technical details. They didn't go like, this is an M.2 solid state drive. That's one terabyte. And it can do such and such speed per second. Like, most people don't understand that. And they don't care either. So and and the first thing they'll ask is, well, how much faster is it than the PS4? Like, oh, well, it's, it's, then they won't have a, like a clear answer for you. So Sony's like, keep it simple. Say it in a language that people understand. Everyone, not everyone is a tech nerd. Yeah. And the console is being sold not to PC players, but it's being sold to console players, which a lot are casual players. So you want to just say 100 times faster than the PS4. That's how it was back then, kind of. It's like how you said something like Nintendo was an 8-bit console, but the Super Nintendo is a 16-bit console. Twice as good. Yeah. Yeah. And the people are like, twice the power. I want it. Mm-hmm. Stan, how would you feel about this presentation overall? Um, I thought it was pretty good overall. Um, it was also short, like relative to everything that they had to show. It was like just over an hour, I think, which was nice because I get the feeling that if this was like an on stage presentation, like yeah, you like have they some... probably they probably planned originally. You get the whole 
you know, please welcome so and so, you know, who will come out and read their paragraph, right? Oh and God. then walk yeah. off and then show the gameplay footage that is all anybody cares about. Please so did that. Yeah, kind of, but it was much more um um not time wasting. Yeah, yeah, it was like more streamlined because you didn't have the whole like walking out and the crowd applauding and the pan to the crowd and pan to the, you know, all the presentation aspect of it was like very streamlined in that regard. So I like that a lot. And it, it, it's like a Nintendo Direct, right? Like you just get the information. You just get the gameplay footage. It's a lot better that way. That's all we want. We don't yeah. want to be stuck in a barn listening yeah. to I play a banjo for Last of Us 2. <laughs> you know how many people are like, just shut the game! <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Uh, um, go ahead. The, 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 the only thing that I think was not as good as I would have liked to see more gameplay for some of these games because they started off with like um, uh, like the new Gran Turismo game and then also Ratchet and Clank they showed like what looked like actual gameplay like someone mm-hmm. was actually playing the game yeah but then for a lot of these trailers it was like um, cinematic it was either it was either cinematic stuff or like in-game footage that was um, shown in a like a cinematic way right there like, was a thing at the beginning. Correct me if I'm wrong. Was there a thing at the beginning that said all footage was played on in- PS5? Yeah, captured. Yeah, yeah. PS5. Yeah. Footage. Well, that's yeah. that's the thing yeah. though, because I think we're getting to a point now where it's becoming difficult to tell sometimes what is a cutscene and like what is actual gameplay, because there were a couple of games where I watched it the first time. And I thought, okay, that's, I mean, you could clearly tell at the start of the Spider-Man trailer, that was clearly a cutscene. I mean, with it closed yeah. up on his fist. And, but I mean, th- there were times where I watched uh, certain trailers and when I went back to watch it again the second time, I was like, oh, wow, that's gameplay. I thought that was a cutscene, you know, or. Oh, really? Yeah. Like, um, for ahead. example, the Horizon trailer, when that, I that watched that the gameplay, first time. Yeah. Oh, it did? Yeah, I have to go back and rewatch it then. Yeah, because the way like they the way they frame, like the way the camera frames the shots, it's like a lot of close ups on the characters, mm-hmm. and 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 then and then also like wide sweeping, you know, shots of the environment. It was like the characters, and then yeah. it was like the environment. So and that was like ninety percent of the trailer. So I was like, can we like get behind Aloy and see her like run around like it was with the Ratchet and Clank? demonstration oh, right. you know like i wanted to see something like that where it's like very clearly like okay somebody's on the joystick like controlling the character you know so i think the thing with the ssd though is that they can literally phase in and out of like cutscenes just into seamless gameplay you saw that a little bit in the ratchet and clank uh game where they would just phase right into gameplay and that was the same thing with horizon like when she goes underwater it's it's and it's showing like the the undersea uh building right and all the, the fish life and everything and then she turns around with the camera and then she starts swimming and you see the little creature the little the giant creatures swimming in the ocean <laughs> i mean that, that was that was gameplay uh when she's mm. in the forest and she's she's going up to the the fox um that was gameplay i mean granted it wasn't like a gameplay where we're going to sit down and be like okay when you press triangle she's going to crap you know it wasn't that type of gameplay which would have been cool yeah. but it was the first announcement, so, but I can feel you there. There could have been a little bit more, but mm-hmm. compared to Xbox's gameplay presentation, so, yeah, it was a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> like, but to be fair, they they still have one more event, right? Like, yeah. Well, I mean, but yeah. that one was labeled gameplay. Yeah. It was presentation. <laughs> Chances are they probably haven't finished or finalized the UI or anything yet. Yeah. So that's probably another thing. I doubt Horizon's going to be a day one. See, time. I think that's probably going to hit into 2021. I don't know. It's hard for me to tell. I, I think that they would prefer for that game to be a 2021 release, but I think that they, I think they have certain games that like, for example, that one that has been in development for a couple of years where if Xbox just came out hard, I think that they could, they could crap out a, a release and holiday <laughs> for horizon if they needed like a blockbuster hit, but I'm pretty sure they would prefer to have that game come out holiday 2021. If that is the case, then PS5 will be a definite day one for me. I mean, Demon's Souls already is. And I, I think Demon's Souls is going to be a day one. 
Yeah, I could see that easily. That 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 is a system seller right there too. Horizon is also, but yeah. just just something tells me that it's not quite ready yet. Uh yeah, I don't think so. I mean, that's a big game. That's a big budget game, and I I I think even if they want to recoup their costs, that that game would need to come out once people actually have a PS5, and mm -hmm. if that came out when PS5s are out and there are shortages of PS5s. Not everyone can buy a PS5. By the time everyone has a PS5, Horizon 2 would be 25 bucks. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So right. and that's a that's an expensive game, you know, when you look at it. So but yeah, sounds like we all were were felt pretty good though about the presentation overall. Like it was pretty good. They didn't have people playing flutes. I didn't have to watch a children's <laughs> choir. You know, right. I, yeah. I, I didn't like, they do they do kind of throw the same stuff at you like this is something you've never experienced before like this is the new start of the evolution and you know you hear that crap and it's like no i'm pretty sure i've played games like these before yeah, yeah. like i don't think you really haven't really shown anything that the ps5 can do that's just such a revolutionary thing from the four it's still going to be a great console Mm -hmm. But it is just just the next step in line. It's not like Nintendo where they do something crazy every console generation. It's That's like Sony, Sony plays it safe. But like the new features and being and up to modern standards and everything is a is a great thing. It's just I just hate when they try to oversell yeah. the product to you. Like I just want some guy to come out. Like it's gonna be more powerful box than the <laughs> pretty looking games on it. There you go. I think it's I think it's harder to sell now, even because like I feel like we're getting to the um, kind of like a diminishing returns point with like if you just push everything into the graphics, right? The real improvements in in these new consoles, I think, is going to be like in um, computing, like um the number of characters like on a screen, for example, or the number of effects or like right. they've been talking the about the size ray tracing. of the maps. Yeah. And, and the loading times and like the, the ray tracing, like with the, um, how they simulate like light and how it like reflects off of objects more realistically and stuff. But that stuff is a lot harder to sell like in a, uh, like in a guy just like talking to you, like telling you how great it's going to be. So right. I think they just <laughs> default to this like marketing speak, you know, like, the future of gaming is here or whatever, you know, see, like, we, can, we, we complain about this, but they already had the game developer presentation or like, they just went into super detail about the technicalities of how it's better. It, it, yeah. And everybody just <laughs> hated it. Right. And then they just come yeah. out and give like a standard presentation with just trailers and like cheesy taglines. And people are like, Woo! <laughs> yeah. yeah, pretty much. They just pretty love it. Much. <laughs> but I, I say that. If you if you want to oversell it, Sony, I want to see that hair on the back of that scroll's ass a mile away when I play my <laughs> games. Yeah, it was kind of weird that Sony literally had to say for this generation, though, that, hey, this is a presentation that's being streamed at 1080p. These trailers are going to be uploaded in 4K later, so yeah. it's going to look even better when you play it in real life. And it's kind of interesting because there's a lot of misconceptions about that because there's some people complaining about demon souls because there's a, the demon souls remake because on the description on the website, they see, they say that you can either play a high fidelity or you can lower the fidelity and, and choose like a, like a higher frame rate. And people are mad because they feel like the PS five should be able to play at a highest fidelity with the high frame rate. Yeah. But, I assume this is a native 4k console. Well, the and not yeah. a dynamic one like PS4 Pro. Yeah, and well, the thing is, some developers have come out that know what they're talking about, and they said basically this isn't a limitation with the PS5. It's a limitation apparently with like the the TVs that people have, and that the, you ha apparently you have to choose either or for most uh, consumer grade TVs, unless you start getting into like the like the $2,000 range for your television. It's just an issue that you're going to have. Like you even have it with 
uh, Review Tech USA, he did a video on this where he's like, I have a PC right now with a 2080 Ti graphics card, which that graphics card is more expensive than my entire PC, right? Like it's, mm-hmm. it's outrageous. And he's like, and every game I play, sometimes I turn down the graphics for the frame rate because it's, there's just so many different pieces that are working together. So I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what resolution it'll play at with at 60 frames per second, but I'm sure it's going to be what 1440p at 60. I'm sure it's going to be not, not full 4k, but I'm pretty sure it'll be amazing regardless. But Mm -hmm. Um, one, one game that I guess we can just jump into, um, games that we, we, that were appealing to us, but one game that was revealed that I thought did show, there was a few, but one that really showed it, what the PS5 was capable of that the PS4 couldn't do was Ratchet and Clank, where they had the, like, shifting of dimensions where, like, they, he would just like shoot something at some kind of like portal and the entire world would just fade around him. And you'd be in a completely new level with new enemies instantaneously, no loading at all. It yeah. seems so seamless and it seemed like a lot of fun. And I was looking at that. Like, I don't think that that could be done on a PlayStation four. It couldn't, um, you would have to do on the PS4, you would have to do some incredible dual layering. Yeah. And that would just, eat up the memory so uh, I, I thought that was a really game. cool so, uh, that is a game that can i don't think could work on ps4 if they release it the same way especially with that solid state drive i mean like yeah they're right that's uh that's something you would have to play on the ps5 to take advantage of those features yeah that's probably the advantage of um building the console with a SSD inside, right, by default, is that you can use different techniques. And that's kind of what they were, like, really hyping up in that previous PowerPoint presentation. You know, they're saying, like, this is going to change the way the developers can make the games. And there's all kinds of tricks that they have to use now for, like, loading times. And they have to, like, duplicate lots and lots of assets so that they'll load faster, like, on the in the game. And now that that's the advantage of having the SSD in the console because then the developers can use that technology to their advantage. They don't have to be thinking like, well, you know, uh, we got to make it so our game works on, you know, uh, a console that doesn't have an SSD in it, you know, and one that does, right? Because that's kind of what you have to do if you have a a PS4 and a PS5. Like if if you're releasing a game on both, then it's going to be really hard for the PS5 version to like really take advantage of that SSD, right? Because you're you you still have to make it in the old way, and essentially it has to be compatible with both consoles. Essentially, is what I'm trying to say. You know, like mm-hmm. whereas Ratchet and Clank is it knows that anybody who plays that game is playing it with the SSD hard drive. That's going to make so they can change their technique of making the game and how it loads everything. That's going to make a giant difference, I think, also for games that are ported to PC from console, because people that are PC elitists, they prefer, oh, I'll just wait for it to come to PC, but it's really been designed for console first. You know, it's designed for that limitation. So with it being designed with the SSD in mind on a PS5, and then it eventually comes to PC, it's going to be able to use your rig at like a whole new level, I think, as opposed to, go ahead. I think pretty soon there's going to be minimum spec requirements on PC to require a solid state drive. Yeah, I agree. I think, I think, I think we're going to get into that territory, especially after the PS5 comes out, like mm-hmm. like you said. But one thing I definitely appreciate what developers are doing. Um, I know I laughed about PS5 being a prettier uh, graphics box earlier, but there is a graphical bubble that we're getting stuck in like you mentioned before we have to more focus on other techniques to make the game look better like the ray tracing Mm -hmm. but now these developers are thinking to themselves okay we have this new technology what concepts can we come up now that we have a solid state drive in there like it's nice to have the idea of no loading times but how can we take advantage 
of the no loading times. And a game like Ratchet and Clank seems to be like first in line yeah. in thinking of what they can do with that. And I really love that developers put themselves in that mindset. I'm a little pessimistic though, because while they're pushing this idea of no load times and it seems like there is no load times, I just see developers just pushing it to the limit to where there will be load times because the map is just like a life size of North America <laughs> or something right. like that, right? <laughs> they're just going to make them so much bigger and beautiful that there will be a load time. But I guess for a lot of games, most games, it's going to be less and less common. So it's interesting you say that because I remember, and again, someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but that PowerPoint presentation, he claimed that having to install data onto a drive is not going to be as necessary as it was before. Obviously, if you have a digital download, it's all going to be downloaded Mm -hmm. on that drive. But like I say, if you have a physical disc and you put the physical disc in, there won't be a huge or there won't be a huge data install. So like, you know, like Red Dead Redemption 2 and the FF7 remake required that second disc. Mm-hmm. According to them, game games like that should not be a thing anymore in the PS5. You should only have one disc, put it in. Um, either there'll be no data install or there'll be a small data install depending i'm I'm curious about that because i've seen some people say that it's going to install directly to the ps5 in order to use the ssd in full capacity and then other people have said what you said where the way it's built it it won't have you won't have have that as much so it'll, it'll definitely have to be a wait and see type of thing but right. i remember that being brought up in the presentation that data installs are not going to be as much of a thing anymore. Like you won't have those, um, those pesky one hour, (laughs) um, downloads, but I'm sure you still gonna have day one DLC regardless of download. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that's still going to be a thing. It's yeah, I guess we'll have to wait and see. It is interesting though, that we, we keep talking about, you know, we're getting to this, this precipice of graphical fidelity where there it's getting becoming harder to show off how more how much more powerful a console is and it kind of felt that way to me a little bit when i was watching the presentation but then i went back and i watched some comparisons that i, I it was either game explain or gamer ranks i can't remember which youtube channel i get those two mixed up in my mind a lot but they did a comparison of horizon zero dawn the original with some of the gameplay that is clear gameplay in the trailer. And I was just like, wow, like I, I, I still I feel like the original horizon zero Dawn is one of the best looking games on the PlayStation four, not the best, but very, very impressive. But then when I saw that comparison, I was like, you can clearly tell like horizon <laughs> zero Dawn's looking a little dated. Cause this, this, <laughs> this new kid is just looking amazing. And it's, it's kind of like you don't realize it until you see what it looked like before. And I kind of felt that way a little bit with the PlayStation three, where I felt like initially when the PlayStation four came out, I was like, yeah, that looks good. But like this PlayStation three, it looks amazing. You know, I was thinking of Final Fantasy 13 in my brain and like, come on, that looks amazing. And it's, it does look good, but you know, once you get used to this higher resolution and just higher textures, and then you go back to what it was before, it's really obvious. I had that kind of awakening when I went go, to go back and play uh, some Mass Effect, and I was just like, "Jesus Christ, <laughs> this looks terrible." <laughs> oh, Mass Effect One looked phenomenal when it first came out. Yeah, but now it doesn't look so good. You know? Yeah, man, that's just the nature of it. There was a time where the Super Nintendo games looked great, or the PS One looked great or the n64 looked great and we're like man it can't get better looking than these polygon graphics yeah but you know you know what game is going to look and feel so dated so quickly it's the final fantasy 7 remake because you have all these sequences where cloud has you have to hold circle the high five or you have to crawl Mm -hmm. between a crevice right and there's so many of those moments because all they're really doing is they're hiding a load screen in order to load the next section and if that's going away with the PlayStation 5, when people go back to play the Final Fantasy VII Remake Part 1, 
it's just going to feel so much slower than it already is with some of those padded out sections. So it's, yeah, I think this could be a bigger change than we're, we're thinking, but they could have done a better job of showing it. Um, what were some of the other reveals that you guys thought were big that are notable that you wanted to bring up? Resident Evil 8 looks phenomenal. Yeah. Dude, I saw people, some people complaining. It was very rare minorities, but people were like, ah, it looked good, but it didn't look next-gen good. And I was like, what are you talking about? It looked amazing. <laughs> All right, so we had a slight technical difficulty. Sorry about that, but hopefully you guys won't even notice. But uh, I, I was just saying that some people have said that they didn't like the way Resident Evil 8 looked, and I thought it looked amazing. And then, Eric, you were talking about How your thoughts it with does Resident look amazing. <laughs> right. So continue like, with that. I was just saying they took the elements of four and seven and put them together. So, like, instead of being in this small, not small manner, um, instead of being in this one area with like the manor and so a few places outside of it, like, you're now you're exploring this entire big village that has all sorts of different places to go. And what's so great about it, too, is it looks like all the horror aspects are kept intact also because there were some already disturbing looking things in that trailer. And that's what I love about resident evil. And that's what a lot of people didn't like about six was it went too hit or five and six is they went too much in the action route, even if they did have fun action elements in them. So I'm glad they're kind of finding a middle road with, um, what people liked about four and what people like about the new modern resident evil and kind of trying to make a, a something that works for both while giving a new kind of experience at the same time, we have to wait and see more gameplay from it. But that's what I took from the trailer that they look like they want to greatly expand upon what worked in seven. Yeah. I think that and the graphics look good. <laughs> For for me personally, I've never been a giant Resident Evil fan. I just don't enjoy that genre as much as other people. However, when I watched that trailer, that looked so freaking good with just the way that they were able to use like different particles in the air and the fog and the lighting. And it just really set a tone for just being scary that I don't think I've seen with other games I mean, maybe if I went back and just watched trailers nonstop, you can point to some other examples, but I just felt like it really stood out as looking really high quality and highly polished. I mean, we don't, I don't know if it's going to be great gameplay or if it's going to be a great Resident Evil game, but it looked really, really good. So I thought it stood out. Capcom's been on a really good track record lately. So I'm very optimistic this game will be really good also. Yeah, I'm Stay kind of I, I kind of want to see more from Capcom. Honestly, I really hope we get something like a Dragon's Dogma two, also be cool. or something like that. Um, I don't know. I'm trying to think of any other AAA, but I know a game like that in particular. I really want to see because they, uh, as much as I love Dragon's Dogma, the first one, there's a lot of stuff they could improve, and that they could just nail down those things. They would have a ex- extremely awesome open world game that can yeah. put a lot of others to shame. Yeah. I agree. I agree entirely. Stan, what, uh, did you have any thoughts on Resident Evil eight or was there another game that you wanted to uh, bring up here that you thought stood out? Um, there was nothing for me that actually stood out as like a personal favorite. I was more just kind of interested in what they were going to show and, I thought you were going to say think, that it all sucked. I was like, what? oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> the the ones that impressed me the most, I think, was uh, Ratchet and Clank for reasons we already Disgusting. mentioned earlier. And um, also the um, uh, Horizon towards the end. Yeah. Looked really good. Yeah. That, dude, I got to tell you, that was the announcement of the whole thing that really excited me because there were some rumors going around that it was going to appear. It made sense because the original mm. had been out for a while and they were done with the DLC and everything. And right when that trailer started and you hear Aloy's voice, 
I was watching Spawn Wave, the YouTuber. And they, uh, by the way, guys, I was watching this while I was at work, working remotely. And I thought, oh, I'll just work while I watch it. I didn't get anything done that entire hour. Because <laughs> I thought, you know, oh, I'll just work while the guy's playing the flute or something. None of that, right? But nope. anyways, so he's sitting there. I was watching Spawn Wave. Like, oh, what is this? What is this trailer? What is this? And I hear Aloy's voice. And I'm sitting there thinking, that's Aloy. And I kept like thinking, that's Aloy. That has to be Aloy. So like the moment mm-hmm. they show her like, you know, galloping across the beach, I was just like, oh, it's Horizon. <laughs> so like, dude, I was like super pumped about it. And I've gone back and watched the trailer. And I think that like they could have really jacked this game up and they still could. Right. I haven't played the game, but from what, the very little that I've seen here, I really think that they've taken what people liked in the original and they just expanded upon it. Right. And they could have gone in a very wacky direction. They could have said, you know what would make Horizon 2 even better? Zombies. Or, you know, they could have, Horizon's going to the moon or something, you know, or Aloy's going to the moon or, or something really crazy, you know, or it could have just gone really nasty and aggressive like The Last of Us or something like that. But they just took what people really enjoyed about the original and kept in the spirit of that and just expanded upon it. Now you can go underwater and visit like cities under there. We're going to the West Coast or America and seeing, you know, the Golden Gate Bridge. It's all been overgrown and everything like that. I mean, it's just really, really cool that they're just keeping to the same formula, but just going about it in a bigger way with like that, like fantastic exploration, just a variety of locales to visit. I mean, dude, like this looks like it's going to be a good game. I, I, I just, I have a feeling like this is going to be an awesome game. So I'm really, really excited about that announcement. That's I absolutely agree. Yeah. If I had to, if I had to give, this is a nitpick. It's not as much of a criticism, mm-hmm. but the one thing I really wish they did, and I know she can change her equipment in game, but I really wish they had for the trailer to show like a default costume and a look, like a new look to her that right. would have just signified that she's much older. She's more experienced. And everything, I would kind of wish they kind of went with a new design for her to kind of show that, but they're using the same exact design, model. yeah, model that was from the first game. And I think if you have like a sequel, you should kind of show that your character has gone through a lot and has learned a lot from the first game they went through. Mm-hmm. I mean, look at Kratos in the new God of War game, yeah. Like you could just tell by looking at him that he has seen some stuff, and mm-hmm. you know he looks much uh, even by his design, he looks much older and calmer than he did in the previous games. And I think Aloy could have given could have been given a little treatment like that too, right. in some degree, because she's not a kid anymore. She's not a teenager. Like she is an experienced adult slash hero then i think they need to do a little more to show that but again it's a nitpick it's still a great design yeah overall i i guess like to me i see where you're coming from but i almost feel that that's something for the next time they announce it or show it because maybe once we see a release date they'll show some gameplay and stuff because they could have easily with so much hype being built around this they could have easily gotten away with a 30 minute or 30 minute trailer, (laughs) a 30 second trailer where it's just, you know, a camera spanning through, you know, almost like the, uh, like a elder scroll six trailer or something where it's just a camera (laughs) going through the woods. And then you just see a shadow of Aloy. Right. And it fades out and it'd been like horizon two. Right. Yeah. And they could have easily just done that. This was like a two and a half minute trailer, dude. I mean, they didn't like, they, they, they showed more than they had to. And I think that, As we get closer to a release date, maybe at the reveal for like the actual price of the PS5 and like the actual release date, the PS5, they might actually show some more gameplay stuff. But I do agree. It would have been cool or better if they had shown a, uh, some of the, some of that stuff. I agree. I love that we're going underwater in some places, but at the same time, I look at robot crocodiles and I'm like, really? Uh, where, where I, I want to know the R&D department before 
the humans went extinct and or like the first race of humans went extinct. They went, so robot crocodile, huh? Why do we need these again? Because <laughs> they're cool. Oh, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. It's like, wow, we deserve to be extinct. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I, I'm really excited about that. Um, one other game that I thought was really cool looking was kind of bridge of the spirits i've seen some people kind of in the middle on this game but i'll see if i can get it up here on the screen but i I thought i thought it looked great i really liked the art aesthetic i thought the gameplay looked similar to what i've seen before but interesting but i I, what i really liked was just the art direction of the game yeah i kind of and want to see more of it because from what i saw it kind of looked like a mix of zelda and pikmin yeah i got um like pixar art aesthetic zelda clone vibes (laughs) well this company has made a fan ocarina of time movie and this Mm -hmm. graphical style and realism apparently that people i've heard this all over the place that uh, it had this art style and that's one reason a lot of people were excited to see this release because it's that team that made that a long time ago, this is now their game. So it's, I was, I was pretty positive on the trailer until I saw the combat and I'm not saying the combat is bad. Mm -hmm. It's just very similar looking. Um, I mean, this is from the brief, um, you know, snippets that we kind of saw. Right. Right. But she kind of has like a, a staff or like a spear type of weapon. And it, it looks very much like kind of like a dodge roll, you know, um, strike at the right opportunity moment and you hit the enemy and there's like kind of a lot of hit stop, like animation, you know, when when the enemy gets hit. And I was like, oh, I thought this was going to be more of like a like a like the Pikmin part. Like I thought this was going to be more of like a puzzle platformer type of game. Right. But then they showed the combat and there's also like some kind of projectile like bow weapon that she has Mm -hmm. and then i was like okay so it's zelda (laughs) you know like i was hoping it was kind of try to be more of its own thing since there's hey man you can copy worse worse franchises that's that's true yeah like if you want (laughs) to it's probably a pretty safe bet to add that kind of uh uh, dynamic action combat into your game you know if you want to sell more copies but yeah i was i was more positive on it for the non-combat stuff that they showed like the art aesthetic and the the platforming and she she can kind of guide those creatures to solve puzzles for her it looks like those like little cutesy uh they're creatures actually, that aren't there about the game like if if they're if they're the core concept of the game overall is to lead them around and everything that will probably lose enough interest for me to not pick it up oh yeah <laughs> I mean, I see, I see some some of the gameplay shot. Yeah, they are kind of following her and stuff. I don't know. I think like this, what it gets is the art style is just so appealing to me and so polished. And I think this is going to be a launch title that it seems like a contender for me to pick up just for that reason, because Mm. this literally looks like I'm running through a Pixar movie. It's like, it looks that like, it looks that stylishly polished. You know, when we talk about games that are living up to their maximum potential, I can't like this game looks like it's like not being held back at all. Like it, it just is everything it's, it's supposed to be from an aesthetic standpoint, but I I agree with you guys. It might be lacking on the gameplay aspect, which is, you know, it's a game, so it shouldn't, but yeah, I, I don't know if it will be bad gameplay. It just didn't, I didn't see much that was like um really Stellar. appealing to me personally yeah like it could be really excellent for what it is as far as i know it was just um a lot of at the combat especially seemed like oh this is like i've seen this done a lot <laughs> recently like a lot you know right with modern 3d action games so i was kind of hoping it would be unique aesthetic and also kind of like a more unique gameplay experience yeah but we i guess i need to see more before i can really yeah. judge that yeah yeah i'm on the same boat i need to see more of it like like it's, a, it's aesthetically pleasing for sure i mean it's a good looking game but like i said if the if guiding little people around is the core concept of the game 
with occasional Zelda elements with it and stuff, then I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, it just looks it just looks like a fun nostalgic romp for me. I, I I don't know. I would I don't know if I would call it a contender for possible game of the year or something like that. But right, it for a launch title, it looks appealing to me. So that's true. Yeah. But yeah, I agree. If the, the whole game's based around those little creatures, that might be kind of stupid. So, <laughs> um, let's see here. Well, did you guys have another game that you want to you want to bring up here about uh, what we saw? I mean, we talked about Ratchet and Clank, Horizon, uh, Kenna, where Resident Evil, a little bit about Demon's Souls. Was there another? Solar Ash. I'm sorry. Solar Ash. Oh, Solar Ash. Yeah, Solar Ash was a was a big game too that was announced it was created by the team from hyper light drifter and it looks like it's taking on that same art style mm-hmm. it looks yeah. Kind of similar yeah it's like they jump from 2d to 3d mm-hmm. on the concept, cool. but they are but they are two very different games and it's not like a continuation of of hyper um light drift it's like <laughs> It's its own thing, but it's using a similar art aesthetic. I think it looks really good. I, I don't know. that like it, I think it's... I'm kind of in the boat with you guys, how you were describing the last game. I'm that way with this game, where I find the visual aesthetic and just general art direction to be very, very appealing. Mm. But I'm not really sold on the gameplay. And I was kind of that way with Hyper Light Drifter, to be honest. I thought it was a great indie game with great music and sound design and great art design, but I just got bored with the gameplay after a while. And so I kind of feel like it might be similar with this, although they are going a dramatically new direction with it. I mean, it's 3d, so it's gotta be different. Yeah. Uh, in the trailer, at least there's a part at the very end where she kind of go, the character kind of goes like, uh, upside down and then you get like the logo at the, t- towards the very end. I wonder if that's kind of the, uh, the gimmick of the game is like, it turns kind of, yeah, you can kind of go upside down or like change your, uh, your gravity, I guess, for lack of a better term, so that you stick to the ceiling essentially. And there'll be like puzzle solving elements and maybe interesting combat from that. But you think Sandra know. Bullock will do voice acting? Because uh, gravity's an element. Oh, oh, I got you. <laughs> Sorry, I can't. I, I, it has to be at least one podcast with a corny joke. <laughs> <laughs> there it is for the entire podcast. Okay, got it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, looks it, it looks interesting. Yeah, it said twenty twenty one, so you can look forward to that. Mm-hmm. I mean, the only other games that I mean, there was a lot of games announced, guys. Like I was even trying to go back through and watch some of them. And some of the games that I like went back and watched, I felt like I'd never seen before. <laughs> like there's so many announcements, but the other the other ones that like appeal to me that I'll just comment on briefly is just, um, I thought that I'm I'm going to be in the the minority here, but I'm actually kind of interested in the Returnal, and I think I'm the only person on the internet that actually thought I kind of want to see more of this game. Uh, basic, basically Returnal was that game where it has a woman and she keeps talking about reliving her death, like a groundhog's day type event where she's crashing on this alien planet. And, you know, she's going through these, this planet and like, it's messing with her mind and stuff. And I'm kind I kind of like that stuff. Like, I think that type of scenario and just aesthetic and sci-fi drama, like it, it just appeals to me naturally. So like, right, like from the get go, I was like already on board. And interesting concept. Yeah. I I, I forgot about it though. (laughs) Yeah. I see some people are kind of criticizing it, saying that it looks like another generic shooter with nothing special about it. And I'm like, oh, I thought it looked kind of cool. You don't know that yet. Yeah. And then, yeah, it's hard to say. Mm -hmm. And then Odd World Soulstorm, I'm kind of in on that too. It's supposed to be a remake of the original on the PlayStation, but like reimagined and I don't know what it is about it, but I think it's just so it's so cinematic in the trailer that it just, I just makes me want to pick it up, but I'm not, 
fully on board to picking it up yet. I'm still in the camp of, I want to know more. Right. So, but I, I thought that one kind of stood out to me as, oh, I might buy this. So, but, uh, as far as games go, that's what I thought. Um, what did you guys think about the, uh, the console design? Uh, it's, it's, it's kind of ugly, but <laughs> with it. Yeah. yeah. It is what I, it is. I'm kind of, I'm kind of so, so on it. Um, the, um, the thing is like, um, they showed it, you know, standing vertically mm-hmm. and you can also lay it horizontally from pictures that we've seen. Right. It's a um, special stand. Yeah. Which is probably the way I'll have it when I eventually get one, because it's my entertainment center is not even tall. It doesn't have enough sh- shelf space to even do the PS4, um, standing. So, <laughs> but, um, I have kind of a, a tinfoil hat theory about this because they showed the, the, the console, there's two versions of the console, right? There's the one that can take the disc and mm-hmm. then there's the all digital model. Right. And the all digital model is symmetrical, right? Like mm-hmm. if you put a mirror right up to it, you know, it'll look the same on both sides as long as you put the mirror right in the very center of the, of the console, right? The, the disc version is not, and that makes me think that they're trying to subconsciously get you to buy the all digital version, right? By actually making that console symmetrical, right? Whereas the other one is symmetrical, but then all of a sudden has like this lump hanging off on the right side of it for the disc tray. I don't think I don't oh, think that's yeah. ten foil hat at all. I think they strongly prefer this to be the last generation of physical media. And I think it's clear that they designed the digital console to be more, the more visually appealing. <laughs> correct. Well, nice try Sony, maybe PS6. <laughs> the disc version. Right. Like like how hard would it be for the disc version of the console? Because because the, the disc tray is like kind of built into that um that right uh panel of the console, the white panel. How difficult would it be for them to have a panel on the other side that's the same size as the one that holds the disc, but just have it be empty, right? So that the console still looks symmetrical from top to bottom. But they chose you, you can pop the top of that uh, digital version and the, the the plugs on the board may not be there, but I bet you there will be an open spot where you would usually put a Blu-ray drive. (laughs) Yeah. So like they, yeah, they did. They didn't do it. You know, like you have the panel on the right. Like if you're looking straight at the console, the panel on the right, it bulges out for the disc, but then the panel on the left is just flat. Why isn't the left one also have a bulge just filled with nothing, right? Just nothing behind it. Right. Because you can't get behind it anyway that would keep the console's design symmetrical for both the physical one and then the all digital one can be the same. It can be slimmer, right? But yeah. They, I, they made it bulge for, I, I don't know why I don't understand the decision other than we want to make the digital one more visually appealing to incentivize people to get that over the disc version since they make a bigger profit on every digital game, right? Versus a, a physical version. Because you have the the retailer taking their cut. Of well, the I wonder. Sale. Yeah, I mean, I there there could be, I think there's probably definitely an aspect to it, like you're describing it, a little kind of a mental uh, manipulation there. But I think also mm-hmm. there's probably a factor of, you know, it's already a big console. Once you start adding like stuff on the left hand side, and then you you want to add some other plastic on the on the towards the top to kind of make it like even bigger, but like so it settles and it seems like it's more symmetrical. And mm-hmm. then the pack, how much is this thing going to weigh, right? And then yeah. you have to think about shipping. They have to pay per weight a lot of times on trucks. So the, if they can keep the weight down, it's gonna they're going to make more money. And rumor has it they're already going to lose some money on this thing anyways. So mm-hmm. I wonder if it's just a combination of factors. Yeah. Mm-hmm. An- another thing that might have gone into the console's design, and this is just speculation, but they have kind of the, the fans or, or vents, not fans, but like little vents going up on both sides of the console. 
Mm-hmm. Right. And I guess that's probably, you know, that's probably for ventilation so that the fan sure. can just blow air eat more easily out of the console. People are spec. I saw some speculation that, um, the, um, what did I call them before panels, mm-hmm. the, the panels stick out higher than the actual unit inside that, like the base unit, the PS five itself, right? They go, they go out higher so that, um, they don't want people to stack something on top of the PS four and cover up all of those vents. Well, here's, so, th- so they want to keep the, the airflow open so that even if somebody for some reason put like a book like on top of the console as it was standing vertically right that there would still be a gap there would still be space that the that the pan since the panel is taller than the actual console itself well, so I, there'd still be ventilation i think you're right but i think that instead of like a book i think they're thinking of the fact that you know if people are putting this on a bookshelf right it's such a tall console that oh. it's going to be rubbing against the top shelf right so, so they, they don't want you to do that. Yeah. But I, this brings up a point that I, like I thought about with the horizontal design where it, like, it looks weird. It clearly, they want you to stand this thing up because you have to buy a stand for, I don't know if you have to buy it, but there's a stand that you have to use for vertical or horizontal. Now, whichever way you want to hold the console and the vertical stand looks like a piece of plastic that just holds the console and makes it level when it's mm-hmm. horizontal. and I, what I want to know is because, well, let me back up here. I know that like you were describing these vents, they're specifically designed in this way to cool off the console faster and better. And it, it, apparently it just makes it more efficient. And I wonder if like, do I need this stand when it's horizontal? Like, does it need to be perfectly horizontal for it to be able to cool itself properly? Or is it going to overheat if I don't have this stand? Because I can see lots of kids like 11 and 12 year old kids losing this plastic stand and yeah. just playing call of duty with the, the console crooked. Right. Cause they don't really care. And yeah. if you're going to have an issue with consoles overheating, I, I could see, you know, a red ring of death type scenario with people that are losing that stand I'm or is worried. it just aesthetic? I don't know. Go ahead. People are going to knock over the PS5 while it's vertical, and mm, the laser it, yeah. can potentially burn the disc. Like uh, that Xbox 360, back then you moved the console, and the the laser will get off its rail, and it will burn a ring around mm. the um the disc the disc. Yeah. Uh, I used to work at a GameStop, and it was super common. Hmm. Back, uh, I mean, I worked at a GameStop during the uh, 360 PS3 era, and I would get returns all the time saying the console put a ring around my disc, and I'd be like, "Sorry, can't help you. Microsoft has to do it. Hmm. Uh, have to replace your game for you." Like that's not something that was manufacturer defect. That was coming from the console itself. So if people are encouraged to stand them up again, I'm worried that like if someone knocks it over for some reason or they pick it up to put it somewhere else while it's on, it's going to affect the disc in some way. It mm-hmm. obviously won't for the digital version, but um, I don't know if there's any fail safe in there that keeps the uh, uh, laser from going out of line when it reads the disc. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of questions they still have to answer, but I mean, I have some concerns, but all in all, like, I I don't hate the design. It's a little weird. It's a little centric. I mean, I mean, guys, how much can you change a freaking rectangle? Right? (laughs) Honestly, they should just keep it a rectangle. I think for a console like this, a mult, like a multi, you, the PlayStation is a multi purpose system, it's primarily gaming. But it can also play movies and uh, can be apps for your channels and stuff like that. And it blends in better if it looks like an entertainment device. And a concept like this kind of looks like it's going to be outdated in a few years. If you get like the PS3, even the the one that looks like a grill, the PS3, Mm -hmm. the PS2, PS4, 
maybe not the PS One. Um, they look like they look. They still look like they will blend in with your entertainment setup. Mm-hmm. And I think this one just stands out for too much for its own good. Again, I don't care at the end of the day. I care what's inside the box. Sure. But if we're having a discussion of its looks. Then, yeah, it's a it's a pretty ugly looking console. <laughs> I think I'll get used to it though, for sure. I th- I do see that. Uh, oh, a a day in which the PS5 Pro or whatever comes out and it's more of a standard you know, brick Mm. maybe I I can't because there's been so much talk about this design and it seems like there's about 66%. It's pulling at 66% right now from what I've seen of people that like it. And I think that Sony just saw that number probably before they came up with it. You know, they just did some testing and saw like, Oh, six out of 10 people like it. That's enough to start a conversation. Here's another (laughs) thing. They did show that there is a black version of the controller. Now, do we know if they're making a black version of the console? I did. I'm getting white. That's how they revealed it. I'm getting a white console. Yeah. I'm going to get the black. I'm going to get the black one. Yeah. I'm sure the black version looks a lot better. It 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 definitely has a lot of um potential for like uh those special editions of the consoles that they release, you know, where right. you have like since you have like a two color scheme, you know, I bet they'll, they'll have all kinds of schemes with like, I don't know, orange panels in a blue, <laughs> you know, like middle or something, you know, yeah, like they already, can go crazy with it. Yeah. They already, yeah, they already do that too. Like they had a God of War console and a Final Fantasy 15 console mm-hmm. and they're different colors. The Final Fantasy control. 15 one was actually not complete when you bought it. You had to wait for another component to come and finish it. Not really, but <laughs> it's a sticker, it's not even halfway done. It did come with a controller. You had to buy that separately. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. So it's a. I think what we're getting at is it's an interesting. It's an interesting design. It probably would have been better, or safer if they just went with more of a a brick layout. But I mean, between the Xbox Series X with that looks like a refrigerator, and the PS5 that looks like a sandwich. Okay. A router, people say. <laughs> a router, yeah. You know, yeah. it's it's a it's a it's a weird time. I mean, but we just need Nintendo to come out with like a, I don't know, a watch. <laughs> I think both Microsoft and Sony need to do better in the design department. <laughs> yeah, and the and the, the size of the PS Five, people point out, it's actually taller, much taller than any other console that's ever been out. So people are even out. the. PS4 Pro design was a little weird. It was still like a box at the end of the day, but it was a slanted box. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I don't know the purpose of that design. Like, even from a looks perspective, I'm, I'm kind of look at it and I think to myself, what were they going with this? <laughs> yeah, I agree. Sure, there's a reason. I just can't find it. I agree. All right. Well, we got to get a move on with this. So, Basically, we got the console here. We have it. We talked about the presentation. How do you guys feel about the digital version? Let's kind of speed this up here. But are you guys planning on buying the digital version? Does that appeal to you? Is there any? Do you have any thoughts on the digital version? Short and sweet thoughts. It depends. My options are there. Simple as that. I'm sorry, you, you broke up. What'd you say? I just said no. I want to make sure I have access to physical and digital. My man. I want features of the ps5 stan um for me it depends um i would expect it to be cheaper and significantly cheaper for me to even consider it like if it's not at least a hundred dollars cheaper than the version with the disc then i see no point um because you'll you'll save money over time on um sometimes physical sometimes digital right because they have sales throughout the year on digital games that are like really good but then also you can find like if a certain game 85 percent of the other time <laughs> yeah if a certain game comes out and bombs right like which happens like even with triple a games you know like the price of that physical copy will just go down like really really fast but the digital doesn't it'll stay at like the 40 to 60 dollars you know like for a long time right so 
Okay. Like it depends. Like you can get good deals on both physical and digital. So if the digital version of the console is not like at least a hundred dollars less than the version that has the physical media, then I can't do it. Also, yeah, like I, they, they, like you said, they have to create incentive for people to get yeah. that one of the disc version. My, yeah, which, my kind of thoughts on this is just essentially I'm going with the physical. And the reason for that is because that thing will play PS4 games and mm-hmm. I can still expand the hard drive on the physical so I can still take advantage of the digital and the physical game so I can get both sales. And I think I'll make that money back up. And I just don't see any real reason to go only digital because what if the PS6 can play PS5 games and all my games are on the PS5? Right. You know, you're, you're just console locking yourself. I can't, if somebody wants to lend me a game or I want to buy a game for $5 at GameStop, if they're still around, I can't play it on this. I mean, something I it's just do wonder to add to your point mm-hmm. is will they confirm that PS4 is backwards compatible with five, uh, the games now, will you be able to download your digital purchases that you did on PS4? The PS5, will all those games be up immediately in the store when the console launches? Or will you have to wait till they, over time, put them back in the store? Then you can put them back in your library. Interesting. I don't know. That's a, to be honest, they're probably going to not transfer. (laughs) I don't, I don't see that happening. They're going to want you to buy it again. And Mm -hmm. I just, another reason for me to stick with the physical media. Another yeah. another thing to consider is like um, uh, if you watch Blu-ray movies, right? If you want to do that, your the digital version. Is Who obviously... watches Blu-ray movies? People don't. I, 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 still, I, I stream everything. I will I mean, tell you, the enthusiast will pick Blu-ray over streaming. Yeah, because yeah. I got a bookshelf of movies. I haven't. They, they got so much dust on them. <laughs> like I, just like uh, like. I could walk over to the bookcase and grab it, or I could see if it's on Amazon Prime. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> I, I'm not enough of a movie person where I where I'll say I have to have a physical Blu-ray over a digital. But um, I do understand as someone who prefers physical copies of games over digital. Yeah. So. <laughs> and I, eventually, maybe I'll come around with digital because, you know, I used to buy PC games, right, and now. If I have the opera, like if I'm at the store and I see a PC game and it has a big box and I'm looking at it, I'm like, I'm just going to go buy that on steam. I'm not going like, to, I'm not going to buy a physical version of a PC game. I don't do that anymore. I like, I prefer digital. So, but maybe that's cause I can keep trading it to a new PC and everything. It's connected to my account. I don't know. But anyways, we got to keep going. So, uh, basically everyone here is feeling pretty good about the PS five presentation. And I think we're all on board that we want a PS five. Is anyone feeling like day one, they're going to pull the trigger or let's say the first month. I need to know exactly what, what the lineup is. Yeah. Yeah. I need to know the, the price, the games that are going to be out at launch Mm -hmm. and how much of my PS four backlog I can get through before it comes out. (laughs) Well, I mean, because you know, there's no interesting games or like nothing that's worth system seller to me until like Christmas time or after it. I may just wait and get like some money together from Christmas and mm-hmm. you know get stuff for it. But if there's something that's like absolute day one that comes out, which I'm sure there should be, but then again, the PS4's launch titles were Knack and resistance mm-hmm. i think Dude, there was some other small stuff but that was about it for the launch so i don't know if they're going to i'm gonna buy it it's five really noteworthy like if demon souls is day one there then that's very tempting yeah, yeah. they said 2021 though for that one demon so, Souls. yeah they, <laughs> well, well all right so excuse me <laughs> <laughs> I'll, 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 I'm going to buy it on day one just because I want to have, well, when I say day one, I mean like the first month, like okay. <laughs> when it comes out, I don't, I don't know if I'll be there day one. Cause I don't want to fight for my life for this console. 
you don't want to be camped out in front of the GameStop. Right. If I have to do that, I'm not doing that. <laughs> like I'm going to get it silly. within a reasonable amount of time after it comes out. I'll feel silly if I buy that PS5 day one and I only play like one few indie games on it that mm-hmm. last a few short hours. And I tell myself I could have waited till something more significant came out. Dude, I'm going to have a blast playing PS4 games on there and seeing them upscaled. I'm going to, I'm going to enjoy playing games all over my Christmas break with a PS5 while I have that time off. It's just going to be fun for me to be able to like stick other games in there and see if they look better and, and play the few games. I'm going to play the crap out of my Kenna, the spirit warrior or whatever the hell it's called. Uh, you know, the, the Pixar movie with lame combat with little creatures that follow you around. What's that? I didn't say it was lame. Uh, You said it was like stuff I've seen everywhere else, which is Uh, lame. Very similar, but, uh, (laughs) since it's in the close cousin to lame, I'll give it (laughs) it a chance. (laughs) It was actually the same thing with PS2 and PS3 for me. Um, PS4 was the only one I really got day one. Like with the PS2, I didn't really want one until Final Fantasy X came out. Mm. And then with the PS3, I don't even remember which game was a system seller for me. Yeah. On that one. I bought that one down the line. I actually bought a 360 first before a PS3. I, I the PS4 had like knack and resistance. So like I'm really they really have to convince me that the game lineup is worth day one two make me consider it if not i think i can actually wait till the holiday season yeah i uh i bought a ps3 at launch when that came out oh that was expensive 599 us dollar version that was disappointing and the only reason (laughs) the only reason i did the only reason i did yeah was because three months before it came out my ps2 died i think my ps so i was sitting there like so am I going to buy like another PS2 for like 200 bucks? Cause it was still, you know, the PS3 wasn't even out yet. It wasn't like right, super right. cheap. Am I going to buy another PS2 and then like a PS3 down the line? And I was like, no, it's backwards compatible. I can play. So yeah, I bought a PS3 and like there was nothing to play. And I was like transferred my FF12 save file over there. And I just remember playing Final Fantasy 12 on PS3, like for the first four months it was out. <laughs> <laughs> oh hey man <laughs> do what you so, gotta do that was a very nice uh feature for the ps2 backwards compatibility because they took it out in later ones yeah mm-hmm. all right we're getting on a tangent we gotta keep going <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <let's> go. <laughs> okay so uh we got one more topic after this we're gonna have to make it s- seemingly a little short we had some technical difficulties but we'll we'll, we'll get through it here um but I just want to take a moment to do the mystery character here. So let's go ahead and get that on the screen here. And I think somebody did get it last week. And then we had another person that guessed the right character as well. So Stan, you want to kind of fill us in on who got it right last time? Yes. Um, Idris's pieces was the first person to guess the character correctly. And the character was Alundra from the PS1 game, Alundra. So and that more of a Zelda style action RPG that was pretty much considered a Zelda clone when it came out. It's pretty, pretty accurate, but it has kind of like a niche or cult following. A lot of people really like that game. So. We thought that'd be a more obscure one, but uh, they guessed pretty quickly. You guys are yeah, too good. I was surprised because there was a lot of different artwork for the character. And I picked the one that I think maybe was harder to guess and they got it anyway. So good job. Yeah. So on the right hand side, we have uh, the last week's character. Somebody did guess Barrett. And I thought that was pretty funny because, you know, when you know the character and you see what they're seeing as the gun, I think they're looking at this sword here and they were, they were it was blacked out and they're thinking, oh, it could be Barrett. And I was like, oh, <laughs> never would have thought of that until you brought it up. But now I see it. But nope, not Barrett. And then on the left hand side here, we have the next week's character. And if you're new to the podcast, real quick rundown, what we're doing here is we selected a handful of games. We are going to present those games soonish, and you're going to be able to vote on those games. And the people that participate in this mystery character guessing are going to have 
a chance to vote in the next game that we discuss in full detail. We'll devote an entire episode to that game, full spoilers, everything that you could possibly talk about within reason for about a two to three hour span of time. We'll talk about that game and you're going to have a chance to vote on that game if you participate. And the way this works is if you get the character right, meaning you're the first person to guess the character right in the comments, you will get two votes. If you guess it right after that person, you get one vote. So even if you already saw somebody that guessed it right, you can still guess and get one vote. Otherwise, you get two votes if you get it right the first time. And we're keeping track of who got it right first, who got it right second, third, etc. And we're keeping track of everyone and how many votes you're going to have. And then we're going to present a list of games and you'll get the vote on which game you want us to discuss. So you can have a heavy influence on what we're going to play in the future. Mm -hmm. So while you're trying to figure out who this character is on the left, I just want to go over our media partner here and remind you about them. So we are media partners with RPGFan.com, and they are a great source of RPG news, game reviews, and soundtrack reviews, and they have podcasts on there as well. Uh, we're on there, and including to Random Encounter and Retro Encounter, and I know that they also have a music-oriented podcast as well, and there have been talks about starting other stuff up as well. So definitely go check them out on their website, RPGFan.com. They also have a YouTube channel, RPG Fan, where they're starting to put more video-based reviews. I've been able to assist with that, with the voiceover and providing game footage with that. It's been a lot of fun, and I strongly urge you to go check that out at RPG Fan on their YouTube page, and there'll be a link in the description if you want to check that out. And you can also check out their most recent review of Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition where they have a video review and a written review, and they gave the game a very high score of a 93%. So very, very, very good rating on that game. So strongly urge you to go check that out as well. I know I retweeted that review because I thought that was pretty good. So definitely go check them out. As far as our YouTube channel itself, some of the other reviews and discussions that we've done are in relation to the Final Fantasy VII Remake, Crisis Core, the Final Fantasy VII, the original on the PS1. We also did a spoiler discussion on Final Fantasy XV and Final Fantasy XIII, Xenoblade Chronicles, Dragon Quest XI, Dragon Quest V, Kingdom Hearts III, Knights of the Old Republic, and Chrono Trigger. So we're looking forward to doing more game discussions. So we hope you take part in our mystery character game. I was going to call it a competition, but it's really just a game. So let's move on to our next topic here. Now, the game that we've been neglecting to talk about is Project Athea. And this is a game that was announced by Square Enix slash Luminous Productions. Luminous Productions is the studio that Square started that is basically using the Luminous engine, which was used to create Final Fantasy XV. And we speculated last week and before that the game that Luminous Productions was working on was actually Final Fantasy XVI. And we said, or at least I said that, was because Tabata was running this new IP. He said it was a new IP. He didn't want to work on a new Final Fantasy game. Then he quit when he got put in charge of this whole studio. It seemed like he could do whatever he wanted. That's all he ever wanted. And he quit. So a lot of us speculated that was because this game was going to be Final Fantasy 16. And when they showed this trailer at the PS5 reveal, and I saw Square Enix, and then I saw Luminous Productions, I got really excited because I said, oh, this game wasn't even Luminous Productions wasn't even supposed to be here, you know, and I saw how good the graphics looked. I thought, oh, this is Final Fantasy 16. But once I started seeing how plain looking the clothing was and just the visual style of how dark and grungy it was, it really hit me that this is not Final Fantasy 16. You know, no. it, it, it just does not look like it at all. And um, there's been some more interesting stuff that's come out in the later interviews regarding this game, most notably that Gary Witta, who's an English and film video game writer, he revealed that he's leading an, a team of A-list writers from the worlds of film, TV, games, and fantasy literature for this project. So they're working on cramming out a good quality story in this game. And it's uh, it seems pretty 
pretty promising depending on who you're talking to. Um, the writing credits for Gary Whitta in particular, though, are The Book of Eli for films, Book of Eli, Undying After Earth, and Star Wars Rogue One, uh, first script only, and then games Duke Nukem Forever, Prey, Gears of War, Telltales, The Walking Dead. So pretty good resume there. Um, basically, what I thought about this short trailer after re-watching it, I got to be honest, I really think this is a case of Square making a trailer and not really having a concept because even though they're, they're bringing on this writer, I really feel like this is after the fact. And I really think if I went to Square Enix or Luminous Productions right now and went around the room, I don't think anybody there could really tell me what this game was about. Because uh, like, I think it was announced too early. And you know how I know this? Why? It says project. They don't have a title for the game yet. <laughs> Well, yep. it's it's when you I'm watching this trailer. It was the second time when I watched it. First time I was pretty hyped up. Second time I watched it, and I'm looking at the words, and it's like she will uncover hidden truths. And I'm like, how generic could you possibly be? Like, I don't think anybody knows what this game's about. I think they they I could just see a conference room with some guy in front of there with like a PowerPoint, and he's like, yes, uh, based off the marketing analytics. We believe a female between the ages of 14 and 19 is the ideal demographic in games right now. You know, we've seen Horizon Zero Dawn. We've seen Khaleesi from Game of Thrones. Dragons are really cool right now. They're really trending. We're going to have a dragon at the end. Like, it's just, but I don't think they, they're like the, the all <laughs> jumping mechanics really popular right now. Uh, Unreal Engine 5, you know, we need to have jumping mechanics. You know, like, I don't really think that they actually have a story here. <laughs> I, maybe they do, but it's just so bland and generic. By this concept, also, it doesn't really look any better than 15. I think well, it looks pretty good. Yeah. Well, we, we saw mostly I mean, cinematics. Yeah. It, Final Fantasy 15 is not a bad looking game. I'm just saying it doesn't really look much better than 15. If they're showing this off as a concept. Well, we didn't really get a good look at her face, and where 15 sucked was the skin. It looked really hard, right? Mm -hmm. It didn't look like actual skin where they kept showing like the back. I guess we saw like her lips and stuff, but we didn't really get to see a good look of, you know, we kept seeing the back of her head. That's what I'm trying to get at. Well, in all fairness, it's really hard to work off of Nomura's designs for this type of graphics engine. Like, yeah. I guess you kind of had to make them look classic, but like, if there's like a different design in here, they can design and cater it to the way the system works. So, I mean, I got no grievances with the character design or anything, or the aesthetic for that matter. Just, um, do they really need to show this right now? Yeah, I think that, it, well, it was kind of weird because I saw some people bring up online, I'm trying to remember who, but they were saying that if they needed something from Square Enix, granted they wanted something that looked beautiful, and so that Square Enix was just like Luminous Productions, right? Because that's their their high end engine. But right. you know, I'm surprised they didn't have. If they're gonna have, they had freaking Grand Theft Auto Five uh, at this presentation, right? Which is a get, getting a pretty old game at this point. Like, well, they could have had some Final Fantasy 14 on the PS5 or something. I, I, I mean, I like, I guess people already play that on PC, but I mean, I don't know. Like, anyways, <laughs> it's uh, there's not a lot here to to really think on. It looks more action oriented. It doesn't look like it's that much RPG. I mean, it could be, but uh, it just I would be surprised if. There was an actual game I could play of this at and Square Enix. I've seen more of this game for a very long time. Yeah, I think like this will be the first time we hear this, and then it'll just kind of sit there for like seven years <laughs> until like this actually. And they're going to try to design an entire game based off this trailer. So you know there'll be a dragon and a girl jumping from <laughs> you know two cliffs and like a, a that wolf. That like it's encapsulated in like the vines, you know, and yeah. like a little eye in the the forest. I mean, it seems cool, but I like between the words that are on the trailer that are super generic. You know, sh sh she will rise from what? What is she rising from? I, I don't know what she's like. You know, like 
<laughs> is there a plague? Like, what's going on here? Like, this wasn't a very good trailer. Yeah, it's just hopefully it doesn't go into development hell for years, and then they decide to call it Final Fantasy 16 when it was not supposed to be, and then you know, remember remember 13's trailer? It had just like just showing lightning, yeah. and then down the line we eventually got more characters. Like, uh, I would hope not they do the same thing with this and just be like, we get the game Final Fantasy 16, which was this and. Like twenty twenty seven or something, yeah, yeah, yeah. But if this is like a standalone IP, not anything Final Fantasy related, I don't care. Take however long you want. Yeah, no, no problem with that. Uh, finish the game, make it good. I mean, I'm glad they're bringing on somebody who's knowledgeable with writing, right, and getting quality projects out. Mm-hmm. So that's promising. So I think that there's a higher chance that this will be a decent project i wish gary had been involved with final fantasy 15 you know <laughs> that would have helped but well that's 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 one thing that is like for sure this isn't the next final fantasy game because they wouldn't outsource the writing right to, gary? to, like a, to a western <laughs> writing team for something like that they're like for such a big brand like temple yeah. franchise for them but with Luminous being uh, developing open worlds, which is like uh, more has more uh, mm-hmm. Western appeal, right? Like or more global appeal, I guess I should say, like open world game design. Right. It makes sense that they also reach out to like a Western writer, right? Like an English writer. To and it, who knows how involved he is, like in the story and game design, but yeah, that it's hopefully they're more aligned because i felt like the final fantasy 15 you know i was playing a eastern japanese story but it was a western game design and it kind of didn't always jive very well this definitely does have more western feels i mean the girl reminds me of ellie from last of us and we have a a dragon at the end that looks very reminiscent of maybe game of thrones right Mm -hmm. where so it's definitely along that spectrum that they're trying to appeal to. So, also, it says at the end of the trailer in the fine print, it's coming to PC. It's coming to PC as yeah. well. It says console exclusive for a limited time, also available on PC. But in big, bold, white letters, it says PlayStation Five console exclusive. Console. And then, you have, then you have to read at the very bottom: console exclusive for a limited time, also available on PC. You know, <laughs> like right? They don't, well, they don't want to advertise that too much. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I thought it was, as far as the announcement goes, it was it was a good announcement in the terms of, hey, this is a game that's being designed exclusively for the PS5 and PC, of course, but, you know, with the PS5 in mind. And that's kind of like counter to the message we get from Microsoft, where they're saying, hey, all of our games are going to be playable on the Xbox One, you know? And that doesn't get me excited about spending $500 on your console, <laughs> you know? I want to see games that are made specifically for this new hardware justify mm-hmm. the cost. And, you know, Sony's showing games that are at least being in, in, in the works, you know, wh- whether or not this game will actually come out, we'll, we'll have to see. So, um, but Eric's right. If it doesn't even have a name, so, <laughs> you know, uh, it's, it's hard to, hard to get too excited. But I don't remember it till like year a couple of years later they bring it back up again. Yeah. Yep. Um, so did you guys have anything else you want to bring up about Project Athea before we never talk about it ever again? I mean, it looks like it has the potential to be a good game. Okay. Like yeah. we don't see the full character design, but the character design doesn't look over the top from what you do see. Mm-hmm. So it's you know, I always appreciate that. That was the that was the first thing that clued me into this isn't Final Fantasy 16 is usually Final Fantasy games they have very stylish outfits, right? Yep. And she was just wearing some regular Wrangler blue jeans, <laughs> you know. Like, this didn't seem seem that style. So, yep, we shall see. But I think that about covers it for the presentation. Like I said, next week we will try to cover. Some of the other stuff that was announced this week, we have Persona 4 Golden, 
on PC, CrossCode. We got, you know, Paper Mario trailer, which is pretty cool. So we'll try to hit some of that stuff. And you guys can suggest some topics as well. We'll kind of go over that and see what we can cover, what we can't. But I think that's going to wrap us up for this week. I want to thank everyone for watching this podcast and listening. And make sure you check out our Discord server. That's where we're taking future podcast questions. And if you are listening audio only, you may want to come check out us on video on YouTube because that's where we're doing this mystery character game. And that's how you can get involved in what kind of game we will discuss in the future. But I will have to leave you there and we will see you all next week. Take it easy, guys. Thank you. See you next time.